almost got it. I'll keep reaching for it. <laughs> what are you doing? Chill! Welcome back to Talking Servants. As you've already seen from the title of the video, this is going to be somewhat of a more uh, controversial subject um, since there are a lot of people that have a lot of the reptiles in tubs. And then you have the other half, like me, that has them in enclosures. I'm not going to be saying that one's wrong or the other. That's what the comment sections are for and you can communicate with me and other reptile keepers and then we can keep this nice and clean and have a nice adult conversation and we can do compare and contrast because I'm not saying I'm right. And I'm not saying you're right, so we can learn together. And I, I can't say like, oh, you can only do tubs or you can do reptile enclosures. Like there isn't one size fits all. So, and just like everything else in life, you can change. Well, there, there could be a third option. There's, there's always options in life. You just have to make it. And for me, I build custom reptile enclosures every, almost every single day. I built a custom reptile enclosure, so I figured I'd be a good person to make this uh, this video, so we can do the compare and contrast. Because I watched a, a Brian Barchek video <clears throat> a few days ago, and I've just kind of been thinking about it, thinking of ideas, feeling how I reflect on the whole subject in general, and you know, I, I don't want to be you know just another one talking about the same subject. But, but what are we going to do in the future? Like, what's going to change? So, I'm going to put my own idea in. And the cool part is, is I'm not saying my idea is perfect. I'm not saying it's right. That's what the comment section for. So, this could actually be a part two video. So, you're going to have to communicate with me. Put a comment in. And then we can kind of go back and forth. And I can refine what you like and what you dislike about a snake rack. And uh, maybe we could build something better for the future of the reptile community, like the whole hobby in general. That's pretty much how life goes. You, like cars, you see cars in the early 1900s, and now look at cars today. Everything changes, and we could be a part of that starting now. We're gonna compare and contrast both of them, and let's say the new design <clears throat> will incorporate the things you like and dislike of both, but. You have to remember that in the end there will be a compromise. It's a like the video I made a little while back is a quality versus quantity. So you're probably gonna have with a newer design, most likely there's gonna be um it's probably gonna be a larger enclosure. <clears throat> you're going to probably have to have fewer reptiles. And you know that could be a good thing anyways, because I personally think that some people have too many and you're not able to uh some people some people can take care of all these reptiles but you know there's breeders out there that have um they need quantity because they do that for for money and uh they definitely need a quantity in uh, a you know a certain space in their facility that they're breeding all these reptiles so you have to take that into account but there will, that, that's going to be the compromise. It's going to be space. So you can have what you like about a reptile enclosure and then what do you like about a snake rack? So let me go make that list. All right, so I'm back. I just got done sitting there for about 15 minutes or so and I was writing down all the pros and cons. So I have one list that is the pros and cons of tubs and rack systems. And the other one is the pros and cons of a naturalistic environment or a reptile enclosure. So I mean, I will be covering like wooden and like more like wooden and plastic enclosures, kind of like uh, like what I build and like vision cages and stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to start with tubs and rack systems. So a pro is they're cheaper. They're a lot cheaper. Um, you can go to like a Walmart or a Target or some other store, even online, and you can buy tubs. Uh, I say like I've been to the store, 
for one of my customers in the past and it was like 30 inches by 15 by 6 inches high and um, yeah it was like between 10 and 15 dollars for a tub so it's cheaper um, con um, well they don't look pretty good let's face it you put them in a rack system with a bunch of uh, um, tubs just stacked against the wall like I don't know it looks like you're in like a garage and you're trying to like organize all your uh, <laughs> your garage equipment. Um, so what's a pro to it? Uh, it takes up a lot less space. So you can have more reptiles um, in the same amount of space than you would with some kind of uh, wooden enclosure or you know plastic enclosure or whatever. A con. Um, most, there's not very much viewing area if you want to like view your reptile and some people argue, oh, your snakes don't want to see you. Like, we have to remember that they're all different kinds of snake species, and some want to be viewed, and some do not at all. A lot of my reptiles, almost every single one, will come to the glass and kind of nuzzle up to it, and they look at me. If I'm editing on my computer, editing my YouTube videos, and they're in back of me, they're nuzzling up to the glass, and they watch me. They sit there, and sometimes I'll open up the enclosure, like the glass, and they will lay their head on the window track and just watch me, and then when they're ready, they come out. There's very few tubs, there's specific tubs you can buy that actually have like a piece of acrylic in the front or plexiglass, and there's very little viewing space. Pro to a tub is that they're pretty easy to clean. You could take your reptile out and go clean the tub fairly easily. It, they don't weigh very much and they're just they're just easy to clean in general. Con, there's very little options for a day and night cycle, for like an artificial day and night cycle. Like for mine, you see I have um, heating elements or lighting in the enclosures and they get an eight or 12 hour cycle. Um, usually for me it's 12, 12 hours. Pro for tubs, they hold heat and humidity pretty dang well. Usually you end up sliding your tub in the rack system and it's got heat tape underneath it or heat pad, whatever you use. And um, yeah, all the, uh, depending on what bedding you're using on the inside of the tub, usually it radiates all the humidity in and doesn't have too much area to escape. So it holds humidity in well and it holds heat pretty well. So it's pretty easy. A con for tubs. Here's one, and some people aren't gonna like it, so uh, whatever. Uh, it's just it's a truth. Some people don't have self control, and when you have um, the opportunity to have more reptiles in a specific space, there's a high possibility for some people to buy more reptiles than they can actually take care of properly. So they they like can't pay certain vet bills. What is a pro? They're they're good for s some uh, smaller reptiles like a ball python, a corn snake, or a hog nose. Something that really doesn't need UVB. Something that, for the most part, doesn't really want to like be all out in the open. Because you know, obviously, tubs are they're smaller. Like there's larger tubs, but they're obviously not cheap so for the most part they're better for smaller reptiles and a con oh well that's perfect as they're just not very good for large reptiles because you could take a reticulated python and put them in a, a larger tub because they do sell them but they're very active animals and they're not going to be slithering around in like a little uh <laughs> tiny, like a tub that they're in Nevertheless, it's just not enough space, and these um, snakes need a lot more space than what they're actually inside of. All right, now that we have done tubs and rack systems, let's move on to reptile enclosures or a naturalistic environment. All right, so we'll go to a pro. The biggest one is I think they look they look fantastic. I think they look really good. Um, con. They certainly cost more. They cost a lot more. So the next pro would be in a reptile enclosure, your reptile would get more enrichment. What I mean by that is there's more room 
and there's a uh, possibility you put you know a day night cycle in this enclosure you can put two hides many hides you want some bushes um my biggest thing are branches something for your reptile to climb on i have a lot of snakes and uh, some geckos and they they all usually like to climb <clears throat> every single one even the ones that are supposed to be ground dwelling i come in here at night late at night and they're they're climbing whether people want to say they're happy or not that's maybe something that we're just putting in our own heads but i certainly see that they're they're using it so they clearly like that object other than that they wouldn't be on it all right a con to reptile enclosure is they're harder to clean than a tub yeah sure um depending on how you line the inside say if i'm going to clean the whole thing i would just empty the whole enclosure and then uh, spray everything down with a disinfectant and clean it so it's a little harder to clean not too much depends on the what uh, reptile enclosure you're actually cleaning because they're all not the same but mine are fairly easy to clean doesn't bother me a pro well kind of how i said it before uh, you will be giving as much space as your reptile needs. You obviously don't want to give certain species too much space because uh, some get stressed um, by having too much space. But like say my reticulated python or my yellow anaconda, I'll be able to give them as much space as they need. I can always build another enclosure or I can go buy an enclosure for some, somebody else. So you have the opportunity to have a lot more options for space because especially like if you have monitors monitors require a lot of space especially like larger monitors they're going to need a quite big enclosure so there's that is that option for that a con for uptown enclosures it takes up a lot more room well we'll find out in the end of the video but it takes usually a lot more room to have adequately um, sized enclosures and a pro they are customizable i mean as you can see these are my personal ones this is how i decided to design these enclosures i'm able to stain them or paint them and i put uh all these tiles on the inside so that i mean there's all different uh, tile uh, assortment of tiles that I actually offer to my customers yeah like all these uh, the molding that I have around here it, it's definitely customizable well a pro for it again is they hold heat heat and humidity really well I can't speak for uh, glass enclosures or a glass tank I have had various sizes of glass tanks before I started building custom reptile enclosures and they don't hold heat and humidity well but let's just say you have a wooden enclosure or a plastic enclosure because there's definitely people like me and there's other brands out there like Vision and some other brand names I can't remember and those hold and radiate all the heat and humidity very very well just like tubs do i don't have any more on cons for this uh so i guess i'll just keep going back to the last pro good for large reptiles they're fantastic for large reptiles i got a request uh a week or so ago and some guy wants to put an adult reticulated python in a 30 inch deep, 8 foot wide, and by 6 foot tall, and he's going to make the whole thing bioactive. So you can make it as large or smaller if you want. I mean, last week I just installed um, a king size bed reptile enclosure. I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen that video, but you can customize and you can make these things as big or as small as you want. All right, so there's all my pros and cons. Um, it's obviously a pretty undefined answer. Um, I've been thinking for about three or four days now about uh, what I would change. I mean, are we gonna look at this as who's right and who's wrong? Pretty sure I said in the video of like, everything changes. Look at the, look at cars, how far we've come in a hundred years. They've, they've changed a lot. So it means that maybe this will be a new time for the reptile hobby to change. But maybe there's, instead, maybe the answer is actually, we should change um, 
rack systems. Maybe let's make them a, more, uh, a little more accommodating for um, what you don't like about them and make that better. So I've been brainstorming um, for the past three or four days. All right, so here's my idea so far. This tub right here uh, is 36 inches wide, uh, 16 inches deep, and only uh, six and a half inches tall. It would be nice to have a viewing area on the front. There are other companies that usually use uh, tubs and then they uh, cut out the front and they put a piece of uh, acrylic or plexiglass um, for a nice viewing area. But uh, I was looking around for another couple hours and all, all these tubs just that are offered from these companies aren't tall. So I found another tub that is 34 and a half inches wide, 19 inches deep. I think it's 18 and a half inches deep and 12 and a half inches high. So it is double the height of this tub. So what my idea is you would have a front viewing area. You would have double the height so you could um, put more, let's say like you put a branch structure in there so the snake can climb. You could put an LED strip, because this is still going to be a rack system. Let's say you come up to the rack system, the window is right here, you pull it forward, and underneath the lip there's going to be LEDs so you can see your reptile and it would have its 12 hour uh, day and night cycle. My idea is to take the same dimensions of what this uh, rack system would be. So 36 inches wide, um, 18 inches deep, and then how tall are we gonna go? We can go, let's just go six feet tall. So those will be the dimensions of what this newer style of snake rack would be. And then I'm going to compare it with a stackable um, reptile enclosure set because I do make those as well. All right, I just finished the two price quotes for both the style snake rack and the stackable snake enclosure and they're actually fairly close in price. So this is what I I drew an isometric drawing for the uh, the snake rack uh, slash tubs. So it would be like I said it's going to be 36 inches wide and uh, I'm going to make the rack system itself 20 inches deep. And then six feet high, and it will hold six tubs that are 12 inches high, so a foot high for each tub. Of the tub would be like a plexiglass so that you could view in. And then in each enclosure would be an LED strip. This whole thing would be made out of white melanin, which is usually fairly standard for snake racks. So the total of this came out to $984 for these dimensions. All right, and the other option is stackable reptile enclosures. So picture something like this. Um, these aren't the exact dimensions, of course, but it would be stackable enclosures one on top of another. Of course, it would be 36 inches wide and then the total of six feet tall total. And each enclosure would be 12 inches high. So a foot high per enclosure. Another uh, pro that I do like about reptile enclosures is the front glass the, with the dual sliding glass doors. You're going in the front and when you have a tub and you pull out the tub, uh, a lot of reptiles usually feel vulnerable if you're standing over the top of them because they are uh, usually instinctively weary of overhead predators so sometimes they can get overly defensive so anyways with those dimensions and let's say you're with the price code that i put in there you're it would have a white sealant on the inside of all of these enclosures i'd obviously be able to put different tiles in there if that was requested as well and the outside would have a nice trim on there as well as you could paint or stain. And that price came out to $1,168. I'm pretty sure it was like 180 something dollar difference. So it's not that big of a difference. So it's like, personally, I wouldn't recommend having 12 inch high enclosures, depending on what, uh, you know, 
animals gonna be in there or rep reptiles gonna be in there. But if it was for breeding purposes and you were trying to do a little bit better, it's certainly an option versus just doing tubs. But uh, that's entirely up to you. But I I'm just trying to compare and contrast what you could do with the same amount of space. All right, so there's my compare and contrast on the subject. And again, like I said, I'm not saying I'm right to each their own. And I definitely think there's a place for tubs, especially after I've been thinking about this all day. There's definitely specific uh, reptile species that do great in tubs. Some people do tubs really well. But then there's other times where you just, you can't do tubs and you need to build a custom reptile enclosure or order one or whatever because you need to accommodate a very large or a specific um, reptile. So post in the comment section below, what do you think? Do you have any views on what you think could make our whole hobby go forward and how we house our animals? Because that's how it starts. You're like, what do you, what do you think? Like. Post in the comment section below, I really wanna know, and maybe there'll be a part two of this video after we've all brainstormed together. So if you like the video, strike that like button. Like I said, comment down below. I'm dying to hear what you have to say. And uh, please do subscribe, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.